I was gonna do a little bookkeeping and I thought I'd turn on the camera and tell you guys what I am doing. I have about an hour until my son gets home. It's 1.30 now, and so I have until 2.30. So I just logged into my client's QuickBooks account, and this is one that I do more quarterly, so I don't have to do it every single month. So I was kind of afraid that I'd have a bazillion transactions, but it looks like there's 205 transactions ready waiting for me in the transactions field that I need to categorize and make sure they're in the books. And the first thing I did was just check the date and it looks like the account has been updating for the last four months. So I have transactions that are from January 1st until April 10th, which is yesterday. So that is good news that I have a reasonable amount. We'll see if I can get through these in an hour. Sometimes if there's weird things, I can probably do like 95% of them and sometimes there's weird things. So let's see how it goes. The first thing I'm going to do is go into all the recognized transactions. And a lot of times it's hard for me to know how to film all this stuff because I'm not going to show you my client's account and I can do a lot in the sample company. So maybe I can put that like next to me, but it's I don't know. I feel like that never quite shows it as well. But anyways, so I start by going to the recognized transaction. So there's a little drop down, and that is the ones that QuickBooks categorizes how they think is correct. You can set QuickBooks to have it automatically like filter those into the books without you having to check them, but I do not like to do that. So I've created rules for a lot of them, and I go through and just manually check them and make sure I agree with what QuickBooks set. So first of all, I go to recognized, and then I sort usually by description because I think that is a pretty good indicator of what it is. So like a bunch of the first ones are Amazon and it looks like it, I have them categorized that to office supplies and that is usually correct. So usually for all these recognized ones, I'm just going to click the button that says select all and it looks like there's 116. So about half of them or so. So I select them all to start out with and then I uncheck the ones. If I find one that I think is like a mistake or that I want to look into further, then I unclick it. So that's kind of like the opposite of if you're going down and clicking every one, I do it the opposite for the recognized transaction because it's more likely that I'm going to agree with what QuickBooks said. So I'm going to do that now. I'll let you know how many I did not agree with. in a quick break to tell you one of my systems, I guess, is so there's a bunch of checks. So this person, this client writes maybe, let me see, like 15 checks a month, which is kind of on the higher side nowadays, I would say. So what I do with the checks is oftentimes they feed in with an attachment. So I can see right now that there are about five checks that are missing the attachment for whatever reason, but the rest of them have a little picture of the check. So say they wrote a check for $500, but I need to know who they wrote it to and what it's for. So that's why that check image helps me. And so usually by the vendor, I can tell, oh, this was their rent that they wrote a check for, or, oh, they were paying for this like continuing education thing or certain vendors, they just pay by check. So I'm trying to decide sometimes I'll just categorize these all into like a checks. I call it checks to check, meaning like I need to finish working on these checks. So I just categorize them all mainly so that I can reconcile the bank. But sometimes that makes it harder to go through all of the attachments just in the way that the system like opens up the attachment. But I think today I'm just going to categorize them all in checks to check because there's not too many and a few of them are missing images anyway. So yeah, if they're missing images, then I can go into the actual bank account and the, I have a login for that for my client and they are almost always in the bank account, like if like next to the transaction or on the bank statement. So I don't know why QuickBooks does doesn't feed in half of them or like five of them, five out of 15, a third, but that is the case for me today. Another category that I'm coming across a lot is their income. So for this client, the income I do divide kind of a lot. Usually it's by person. So again, similar to the checks, what I do is I just put it all in one bucket called legal income. And then today is only the 11th. So on the about the 20th to the 25th, like before I run payroll, I will go into all of that income and then I get notes from my client to know how to divide it. So that is like a little project I will do on another day. So for right now, for this quick like categorization, I'm just going to put it all in one bucket that is called income. And later on, it will be divided out correctly. All right. 
right, so we finished that list of transactions. There's only one that I did not approve or accept, I guess is the, the word. And that was a charitable donation. So it was a little bit higher amount. And I just wanted to double check with my client that I had that in the right place. And the vendor was a charitable cause that they were donating to. So that only took me like less than 10 minutes, maybe eight minutes to do all that, plus a little bit of time chatting with you guys. So that was really quick. That's one of the easier steps because QuickBooks already did most of the work for me there. So I'm just gonna hit accept for all of those which I love. Okay, it's thinking. Next, I'm gonna go into the ones that did not have a rule to automatically categorize them. So I just click out of the recognized filter, and then I am going to go through these remaining transactions. Again, I like sorting by description. A lot of these, I see the green matched thing. So it looks like a lot of them are gusto payments. Those are for payroll. And so there's probably like 10 of those or so, maybe more if I scroll around. So that just is because all the payroll information from Gusto is feeding from Gusto into QuickBooks. And so it's really easy because I just match it. So it just says one match found and like one, they're for like large amounts because they're payroll. So one's like $28,000. So I just hit match and that is all done for me. And then the really detailed journal entry is already done. So I didn't have to do like a big journal entry for payroll. And that is probably like a really big Big topic for another day, just how payroll works. I think I've talked about it a little bit and it's not my specialty. So I use a payroll company, but you still kind of have to understand like what's going on. But for my job today, I just have to match all the transactions. The only one that doesn't match very well I'm seeing is the gusto fee. So that's like about 200 and some dollars. Maybe I can make a rule right now actually that says anytime you have this vendor, I think the problem is that it always looks a little bit different. Like it says gusto and then it says a bunch of letters letters and those letters are different each time and so it doesn't always know that that is the gusto fee or I take that back actually it does think that it's the gusto fee but it's not matching so maybe that's something I have to let me know in the comments if you know maybe that's something I have to go back into gusto and say every time you charge me this gusto fee put it in this bucket in QuickBooks I feel like I would have done that if it was possible so maybe it is not possible but that's something I can research I can just google that probably also or let me know in the comments if you are already know this and do this. All right, so I'm gonna go through these for a while and I will check back in when I'm done. And not sure if you care, but this one I do the opposite. I don't click them all at the beginning. I check mark them as I go. And then every like 10 or so I'll click accept just because I feel like if there is like a mess up somewhere, I don't wanna have to like redo all the work I've done. So I just do like 10, click accept, do another 10, click accept. So I actually just found a mistake that QuickBooks made, not really like a mistake, but it just didn't categorize everything perfectly. And this is why you need me as the bookkeeper to check everything. So there was a new vendor that I hadn't come across before and I actually just Googled it. So I found out what it was and it's basically like, like an educational company. So my client is using it for education. So it was like $119 every month for four months. So basically like some kind of subscription it looks like. And QuickBooks categorized it as a meal. So it categorized it as a meal, 100% a party with all employees. So I know that is not correct. So based on the Google search that I did, I will go ahead and categorize that as continuing education for this client. And I could double check that with my client, but I do feel pretty confident that that's what it is. When I Googled it, it was super clear that it was like the right industry. Everything it was like local. Everything seemed, you know, to match up exactly for that type of expense. All right. And then when I went into the transaction, it looked like I already had that vendor in there, which is a good sign because it's not totally out of the blue. And then, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a rule for that one. So I just hit the create a rule button and I name this rule. Let's name it with the vendor name. And then every time you get something from that vendor, you put it into continuing education. Yep. All right, so next time that will be in like more of the step one, the recognized transactions. And then even just now that I just made that rule, all of the, like there's six different times that sh has shown up in the last four months that it recategorized them all. So that makes it easier for me. I can just click all those six and accept them. 
All right, I just wanted to give you a final update for this little section, this like 45 minutes that I worked or an hour. And I got it whittled down to all but about five transactions that I'm just gonna leave sitting here for now until I can work on it next time. Some of them I had to look up a couple of vendors to see what they were about eight or seven or eight of them went into ask my accountant because I didn't know what they were. So I'm gonna check with my client. So some examples of those is an ATM transaction. So they got cash out for some reason. So I have no way of knowing what that went towards or where I should categorize it. So that's something that I'm going to ask my client. And then another weird one was, oh, it was a new insurance company that I'd never seen before. And it was kind of a larger amount. It was like $1,500. So I just wanted to double check that that was something they know what it is. And it is, you know, a legitimate expense. And then for some reason, QuickBooks categorized a bunch of things to uncategorized expense, which is actually a category. And so for those they were some of them that I can't remember off the top of my head that were just kind of weird vendors that I only come across maybe a couple times a year for this client so I actually have a spreadsheet that I keep that I can refer to in case there's like a one-off vendor that is not in a rule in QuickBooks. So maybe I should, I actually, a couple of them, I think I created rules. So there was one vendor that I was like, I know I've seen this one multiple times, but I can never remember what it is. So for that one, I created a rule. And just, if I just do like, you know, three or so rules each time I sit down, then that adds up over time. And that, because like you probably noticed the first section of my categorizing was quicker because it, they were all recognized. And for the most part, all of them were correct except for one. So I hope that was helpful. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you are a bookkeeper and what are the hours that you tend to work usually. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you next time.